Well, the process started when I was a, a, a little boy. And, um, well, we had classical records at home, classical music, uh, mainly from the Romantic period, like Liszt and Brahms and whatever. And um, I had a brother, and he, uh, he was into Deep Purple. He listened to Deep Purple. And I liked both of, uh, of those types of music. And um, my brother came home one day with a, a record, which was a concerto for group and orchestra by Deep Purple. And uh, uh, I remember when I opened the gatefold sleeve, I saw this photo of this, you know, young, young lad who, who apparently wrote that concerto, sitting at his Hammond organ, like uh, Mozart or Beethoven when they play their own concertos, sitting at their instruments. So I thought that was, you know, the, the modern day equivalent of, uh, of Beethoven or Mozart. And uh, I thought, yeah, well, he has a group, so he's going to play his concerto with a group. And it, it made sense, you know, the combination made sense. It put two different worlds and it brought them together. And uh, that's, that's how it started. I was learning music at that stage, and uh, what the concerto did to me was that I wanted to know more about orchestras and orchestral music, and uh, I heard a lot of things in the, or in, in the concerto for group and orchestra that sounded the same as uh, pieces like uh, uh, um, Tchaikovsky or so. And um, I went to the local library to, uh, to hire scores, and. Um, examined those scores and I found out the similarities between concerto for group and orchestra and um, say uh, Romeo and Juliet by Tchaikovsky and by doing that I was able to uh, to, to come up with a, a sort of a mental picture of how the music of the concerto should have looked like on paper. Um, this chord <coughs> which we had just had as an A minor chord has got a D in it yeah, yeah. It's like an added fourth, okay, okay, which okay. sounds well, we, like a, a wrong note, but which actually seems to work. So we're going to. We uh, we filtered that one out when when I was at I, your place. I think I think right. we, and, uh, I think we probably just said, oh no, it can't be. It must be a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it sounds like a, a sustained uh, a sustained, sustained fourth. fourth. Yeah, well, yeah, we've put that back in. In the same <laughs> town as where the library was, there was a, a store who, s who sold uh, sheet music, and I was hoping they were were having it, but uh, unfortunately, it never. Uh, was on sale, so that's why I started to examine the other scores and trying to find uh, my way just to get it uh, to get to get a picture of it, how it what it looked like. Well, I was at college and um, I wanted to write uh, some sort of a paper or a thesis about it, and um, then I found out that there wasn't a score available. And uh, that's, uh, that was the time that I toyed with the idea of transcribing it. And I knew it was going to be a lot of work, uh, so I had to make up my mind whether to do it or whether not to do it, because if I'd you know, finished 80% of it and someone just turned up with a score, it would have been a right nightmare. So um, I thought th the first thing to do was to find out whether the score had really been lost. And uh, I wrote a letter to uh, Sir Malcolm Arnold. I thought it was a good point to start because he conducted it. Um, it was obvious that John didn't have a, a copy, so I thought Malcolm Arnold was a good uh, point to start. And I got a reaction. Um, uh, uh, he said that the scores, the location of the scores, uh, was not his responsibility, and that he didn't have a copy. And uh, I tried some other. Uh, uh, things I tried the Hollywood Bowl, but uh, to no result. So when I found out that uh, the score was really missing, uh, I decided to uh, to have a go at transcribing it. When I finished, uh, I think 60% of the transcription, uh, I finished the full score of the second movement, and um, the th uh, third movement was well underway, and the first movement. Was, uh, was also finished, not in full score, but in some sort of a abbreviated version, just uh, uh, some sort of a piano version with uh, instrument labels like uh, strings and oboe. And, uh, and um, 
I went to uh, Rotterdam then in 1998, uh, where Deep Purple played a gig. And uh, I went to the hotel where I supposed John would be staying. And I left him a note at the reception desk um, explaining what I'd done. And uh, I added 30 pages of uh, uh, the most difficult bit so that if he would look at it, he would know I was serious about it. And um, uh, I left a note at the reception desk. And um, as John's name was not in the register, I thought, well, it's a bit strange. What, what should I do? So I. I crossed out John's name and put uh, the name of the manager on it. And I thought uh, it, it, it will find its way, its way and it will eventually end up uh, uh, with John. So, um, but when I was on my way out, I thought, I don't think it's going to work. I was, I was, I was you know, in two minds about it. Um, when I came out, I turned around instinctively and went back in again. When, to the reception again, and I uh, said, would you mind giving me the envelope? Because um, I want to readdress it again. And I readdressed it uh, and put um, uh, uh, put uh, Colin Hart's name on it. As he was a tour manager, I thought he was closer to John than their uh, general manager. So um, you know, I, went, I went out again, and I felt a lot more happier. And when I came out, uh, a, a black car had just stopped in front of the door and two men were getting out. I was looking Ian Gillen straight in his face and at the side closest to where I was, um, John Lord was getting out of the car. And I thought, it's an opportunity not to be missed. And um, uh, I, I, I addressed John and said, well, it's not what you think. I've not been standing here for the last couple of hours just to... to uh, to meet you, uh, but I've just left a note at the reception desk, and if you uh, just read it uh, and decide what you want with it, it's about your concerto. And uh, I, I, I told him, I know you've lost it. And um, John, who wasn't in a good mood, he said, yes, we've lost it. And I thought, well, only 10 seconds to go. And um, uh, I told him that, uh, I had the full score of the second movement with me, and, uh, and John eventually said, we'll have a look at it right away. So we sat with a pot of coffee, and we went uh, through the score. I still tell the story about how I arrived from somewhere in Germany after being driven at high speed mm -hmm. through the rain, and feeling that at any moment I was gonna lose my life, and getting to Rosnow with you. And this guy coming up to me saying, excuse me, John, have you got a few minutes? And I'm going, no! <laughs> That's right. And he goes, well, it's about your concerto. I've gone, ah. Come in, lad. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Um, and we had a beer, and you, you, out of your knapsack, you produced these the rolls of. Uh, it was of the second. Second. It was the it second was movement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and a short score of, of, of most everything else. I yeah. Think. yeah. That was an exciting, uh, an exciting moment because the score was nicely bound, and it was in computer print. Since John only had his own handwriting, it was a, a big step forward. And. Um, when, when we looked at the score and John said, uh, I can see my own handwriting coming through and I can see, I've been rubbing this out, I can see the stains, you know, when I was rubbing things out and uh, there, were, there were coffee stains on, on this page. And so it all came, came back to his memory and uh, in the end he said, well, now that we have a score, it means that we can do it. In 1999, when it's uh, 30 years to the date, it's, it's been performed for the first time. It made him realize that uh, he had to follow his own path, his own career, uh, playing the things that he liked and uh, doing the things that he liked, like playing with orchestras. Yeah, after I met John in Rotterdam, I um, had to transcribe um, parts of the third movement, and I think that that was finished uh, in December uh, 98, and then in May, uh, 99, I finished the complete score of, of all the three movements. And then at um, the end of May, I went to John's house in England and we went through it and uh, discussed uh, 
uh, the piece and discuss my transcription. Um, some some mistakes uh, that were on the recording I had uh, I had already corrected, but some things that I wasn't sure about we we, we discussed those and put it right or changed it or altered it. And um, um, John wanted to update the concerto, so uh, he would do that in, in June and, Ju and July. And then in August we, uh, we met up again, uh, because I was having my holidays in, uh, in England. And um, uh, we, met, we met on the airport in, uh, in Birmingham to go through John's corrections because I had to uh, I had to uh, update the score in my computer so I brought the corrections home and uh, I worked on it again and I think the whole the whole piece the whole the score was finished only I think two weeks before the actual uh, uh, show in, uh, in in September I met Paul um, uh, during the rehearsals in 1999 in September I, I didn't meet him uh, beforehand. He was working with John on the on the scores that I shipped over to John, and uh, uh, they made alterations, alterations, and uh, prepared it for performance. I think it's. I think that's used that as a as a, as a sort of template for it. Um, I think basically how it was started was that she started out. Just basically copying what you did, mm -hmm. and then you know we sort of developed it from from there. Yeah. The rehearsals were exciting. It was uh, uh, finally everything came to life. I mean, if you're transcribing, um, you know how how it's going to sound like, and or how you want it to sound like. And uh, the orchestra was fantastic. They were great. They sight read everything, and uh, even the, the most difficult passages they sight read, and it was almost uh, almost okay by then. So that was a very exciting uh, moment. Uh, the night of the first performance was uh, a very special moment because uh, when I started to transcribe the, the concerto, my aim was the 30th anniversary performance or recording. Um, so it all came. You know, it, together at that at that time at that performance, it was very special. <laughs> I met Tony Edwards on uh, the Saturday uh, night after the performance, and uh, we had a little chat. Uh, John introduced him uh, to me, and we had a little chat. And uh, I think Roger Glover was there, and uh, Roger said that he was. Uh, uh, it was a special moment for him because it was one of his first gigs with with the Purple in, back in 1969, and uh, Tony was there, and uh, I think it was special for him too. Yeah. When I started transcribing it, uh, the piece hasn't. I had the idea the piece hasn't dated, and I, th I still think it hasn't dated because it keeps developing and keeps evolving. Because um, the orchestral parts are fixed, but um, the band parts, you know, they are, have improvisations and everything, so it will sound different each time you play it. And. Uh, I think that's good about the piece because it keeps it fresh and it, it can be played, you know, if you play it in, in, in 1960 or 1970, it will be different than when, if you play it in, in 1990 or in, in 2010. Great to see you. I love this. Wonderful to see you. I love you too. And thank you for setting the whole thing in motion. Yeah. Because it wouldn't have, we wouldn't be standing here if it mm -hmm. wasn't for what you did. And I, I will never forget that. Okay, that's good. And I shall reflect that in my sleeve notes for this trip. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much for coming. That was great. Okay. Cool. I've enjoyed it. Really. No, good. It, it's something. It's, uh, I think it's, it makes uh, uh, an exciting recording. Yeah, I think it does. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, uh, and it's it's great to be able to. Uh, uh, um, 
analyze it so mm. in, in a recording situation which you couldn't do in a live situation mm. you know? yeah, right. so it's uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to bits absolutely thrilled because yeah. I was hearing things that you don't hear live and it's great okay. wonderful Thank God you. bless you Marco bye bye look up so give my advice to your wife